Now Honda knows how to package a large cabin space even when the outer dimensions suggest otherwise. The Brio is no different. It has all the essential elements that you would expect inside a small car, but they have been crafted to provide maximum seating and cargo space. Now, the interiors of the Brio. They look very familiar, don't they? Now, they are inspired by the interiors of the Jazz and the Honda City. You have a similar color scheme as well. You have black on top, beige, and then you have this new brown uh, shade in between. It, it is a lot similar to what you get in the interiors of the i10. Uh, so, uh, apart from that, uh, the audio system is much similar to what you get in the Honda City. Again, no CD player in it, only auxiliary, radio and uh, USB. Apart from that, uh, the rest of the console is very nicely laid out. It is slightly driver oriented. If you look at the center console, uh, it's, it's slightly tilted towards me. So it is slightly uh, driver oriented. Now this vehicle is also built to a cost. So if you look at the plastics, they are slightly low rent as compared to the Honda City or uh, the Jazz for that matter. As I mentioned earlier, the front doors have been given prominence over the rear doors in terms of size. Therefore, ingress and egress is easier in the front than in the rear. Get inside the car and you instantly notice how low the seating is. Reminds me of the first generation Honda City. The lower seating has granted better headroom without the need of engineering a tall boy design. However, the exclusion of a seat height adjustment could hamper visibility for shorter drivers. Talking about the front seats, they are nicely wide. Even a large person like me can accommodate uh, properly uh, within these seats. And uh, this is something that we have been seeing on most of the cars in its segment, integrated headrests. It not only saves costs, but it is also comfortable at the same time. So you see it in the i10, you see it in the Etios, and now you have it in the Brio as well. Now the front seat is set up to my driving preference, my driving position. So the space at the back isn't all that generous. The under thigh support is quite less, the knee room is quite less, the foot space is quite less. Uh, but again, if you think about it from an uh, average Indian's uh, point of view, this much space should be enough. Again, these contours on the seats, uh, the front seats, they give you not enough uh, knee room, but not uh, all that uncomfortable either. So I think, like I said, uh, from an average Indian's point of view, this should be a comfortable amount of seat space. With the Brio's optimized cabin size and a flat rear bench, seating three adults isn't too difficult. But I doubt how comfortable they will be over a distance that is longer than usual city commutes. Coming to the controversial tailgate, the Brio's rear end packs in a decent amount of boot space for a car in this category, thanks to the width and the depth that is provided. The extra large rear windshield is particularly helpful while backing up in tight parking spots, especially the ones with poles, blocks, sleeping dogs, etc. However, the lack of a rear wash and wipe and a defogger on such a large windshield, even on the top end model, is disappointing. What Honda provides though is a cup holder for the rear bench, two cup holders for the front seats, seat pockets, body colored door pockets, electric windows with auto down for the driver, electrically adjustable rear view mirrors, and wiper, headlight and turn blinker stocks which are placed in the correct positions for a right hand drive car. Overall the interiors of the Brio seem pre uh, premium as compared to most of the other cars in its segment and they are a welcome change over what we have been seeing for all these years. If the success of the Honda City is anything to go by, the Brio should definitely win a lot of hearts. Quite frankly, it makes most of the current small cars look outdated and low-rent. And that is the Brio's trump card.